I'm going to start with some poems from my book, The Loneliest Girl. This is the opening poem in the book. There are 10 things you need to know to be a woman. When you're young and the little boys say, let me see you pee, you need to say no. They want to see under your dress. Bad things can happen. They come for you. When you're in school and the other girls laugh at you, because you're dressed like a half-wit, don't expect your mama to care. She'll laugh with your sisters, with her mother. They'll all laugh at you. They're laughing right now. They come for you. When you go breasts and the boys say they just want to look at them, they don't mean it. They mean they want you to undress. They mean they want to have sex with you and then with someone else and then with someone else and then with someone else. They will tell everyone how easily you slipped off your blouse, unhooked your bra, stepped out of your skirt. You thought it was love. They thought you were easy pickings. They come for you. In college at the parties, if you have had a drink and then another, his penis will slip inside you. And if you have had too many drinks, so many penises will slip inside you. It will be a party of penises inside you, a memory of penises, a throwdown of penises. And you will try to stand afterward. You will try to walk. You will hear them laughing. They come for you. You move to another state and start over. You date doctors and lawyers. You are taken to the country club where the fancy men put their hands on you. They take you to high rise hotels where they grope you in exchange for dinner. You put out, you are popular. They come for you. You get a job. You ask the women at your company to help you. You want help meeting important people, making connections. The women will not help you with anything. They sew the scarlet A to your blouse. They come for you. You get married and then you get a divorce. You hope the women will invite you to meet their single friends. They do not want you alone with their husbands. They don't trust you with their boyfriends. When you try to talk with their men, they come for you. The only way you could avoid attention is to get fat, but you, have it, you live in a city where fat is not permitted. For a few years, you let yourself get a little bit fat and you have a few more friends. You have a fat boyfriend. Then you join a gym and lose weight. The women turn on you. They come for you. You could become religious and talk to God, become a Jesus lover or a God follower. And there in church, maybe the other women would like you. The other men would assume you aren't about sex. Don't people pretty much stop having sex once they join a church? You attend church one Sunday. Everyone can see you are a fake. They come for you. You are a motherfucking skinny ass bitch. You've stomped around the world in your life building castles. You've painted the sky and planted trees. You have broken the goddamn rules. And when they wrote new ones, you broke those. You are out of control. You are the wild New Testament of women. You are breaking the 11th commandment, which is thou shalt not speak if thou art a woman. You are speaking in your dirty boots without shame. Where is your shame, woman? Where is your shame? Why do you not hang your head, woman? They come for you. They come for you. They come for you. This whole book is about Medusa, uh, patron saint of women. Uh, Medusa, of course, we all know, lived with her snakes, but she got her snakes because she was raped. You, Poseidon, came to me in the temple. I laughed at suitors, men in love. You said I was a thing of beauty a cup for love. You smashed the cup. You poured the wine. In Athena's temple, you raped me on the floor. My eyes met Athena's. She found me guilty. After the rape, I gathered myself in blood. Athena whispered, I curse you. Athena said, you wore red. Your skirts rustled. You smiled. Your hair will rustle. Your face will be unforgettable. Your silky hair will be snakes. Your voice a hiss. You are creature. Carry this story forward. Rape is the fault of the victim. Carry this story forward. The female turns the key, opens the door. You raped me in the temple. I am that thing. Hold my head aloft. Laugh for generations. Don't stop laughing until Medusa is synonymous with death. Turn me into that thing you fear. Make me monster. Make me creature you fear in the dark. You fear the thing in the dark, wet, ripe, swollen, waiting for pleasure, that thing demanding. Fear the woman with her own snakes. Men kept visiting me in the cave on the island of Cisthene. Men kept visiting the cave. It isn't true they all died. Imagine the men who entered the cave. 
found love in the dark. Imagine the men who braved the forest found my lips. Imagine the men who found my lips. So this last poem is called Stumbling Toward Grace. I liked this first part where Adele was talking about going to therapy. It was so inspirational. Um, I, I, I'm going to think about that. Um, I haven't been to therapy, but I've written a number of poems talking to an imaginary therapist, and this is one of them. Are you thinking of killing yourself? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Would you like to go on living? No one wants me to live. No one. Okay. My husband and children want me to live. No one else. Well, now that you mention it, I have 11 friends who want me to live. 11's a good number. So you want to stay alive for the 11 people and your husband. And how many children do you have? Technically two. Why technically? I have two stepchildren who are, who are adults. They may want me to live. But your children and husband definitely do. Absolutely, no doubt, I'd swear on it. Of course, sometimes my husband is annoyed with me, but he still wants me to live. Good to hear, he wouldn't want you to end your life. No, it would bum him out quite a bit. He'd cheer up after a few months, of course, he'd be out dating and he'd find someone easier to deal with. Most women are easier to deal with at first, but then we all turn out to be whiners. Of course. So you are going to live? Probably. Things are bad now, but they might get better. And in the meantime, two children, one husband who's only sometimes annoyed, and 11 friends, and you have a dog? Yes, a dog, a great dog, Jasper. I'd stay alive for the dog alone. That is good to hear. So what happened? Can we talk about it? We're supposed to listen and act wisely. I did neither. And then a number of people wanted me dead. I see, but they didn't actually come after you to kill you. No, they just wished me dead. What you want is what matters. I don't know what I want anymore. What did you do to annoy these people? To make them wish me dead? I wanted to be a defender. Instead, I was a heckler. What would you like to do? I have this one life to build the cathedral of the soul, to rebuild mine like a small chapel, a single flower, a bell, a boat, a slip of paper with one perfect poem, a singular line of prose, knees on the ground planting a row of corn, a trembling ascent of a pyramid, a bird, a grape, a perfectly poured cup of tea. I have my life to work on this single thread. There is unrestrained stupidity and there is grace. In my dreams, I stumble toward grace. Thank you so much. Beautiful.